So horizontal projectile motion, we're going to attempt to find the time of flight and the range. The range is the horizontal distance. So uh, the time of flight is uh, going to be twice the amount of time it takes to go up. Um, there'll be a time that it takes to get to the top of the flight, right at the peak, the peak we call the apex and then it comes down again and uh, this isn't very easy to, to draw nicely because of the uh, scale of the picture but this is a, a parabolic pathway and it's symmetrical so um, the left hand side should equal the right hand side which is really nice, makes our calculation so much easier okay so um, to work out the horizontal range we need the horizontal velocity and the time of flight um, and that, that will help us uh, because it's a constant velocity and there are no external forces acting on the ball horizontally in the horizontal plane we can work out um, the range as the distance in this equation here with velocity as distance over time so as I said before we need to know the time of flight and we need to know the horizontal velocity to find d the range um, because that will substitute into d equals v times t. Um, so to find the time of flight we have to consider the vertical um, part of this only and uh, the easiest way to do that is to find twice the time it takes uh, to reach the apex. Now the apex is helpful to us because at the very top if we're just considering the vertical motion um, then we know that the final velocity at the top is 0 meters per second so that means we've got one factor that we know about for our kinematic equations. Um, and we also have our uh, initial velocity, which is going to be uh, from our trigon trigonometry. It'll be 24, 24 meters per second times the sine of 36 degrees. Where that comes from is your uh, triangle here. We're trying to find um, this side and uh, that's the opposite side to the 36 degrees so that means we're using sine so remember sine opposite over hypotenuse um, is how you do the trigonometry calculation there the hypotenuse is 24 meters per second and it rearranges to form this so you can work that one through in your own time um, and we'll just do the calculation for that now so we've got the vertical initial velocity uh, 24 times sine of 36 degrees gives us 14.1 meters per second okay so I've gone to an extra um, significant figure we have three significant figures there whereas the initial uh, the values given to us are two significant figures 24 meters per second is two significant figures 36 degrees is two significant figures um, there's another piece of information we know and that is uh, the acceleration and relative to the upward positive initial velocity the acceleration is downward so we'll call that negative and it is uh, gravity which is 9.8 meters per second squared ms negative 2 um, I think that's all the information we need as I said we're looking for the time so we need an equation which links all of this together uh, let's see which one suits we've got our kinematic equations VF equals VI plus AT so this equation has got the final velocity which we know is 0 the initial velocity we know is 14.1 uh, meters per second the acceleration which is negative 9.8 meters per second so we rearrange just to find T and uh, this is that out of the way, love doing that. That's the fun of iPads, I think. And uh, we can substitute into to our equation um, to give us zero equals um, fourteen point one plus. Now remember, it's negative, so I'm just going to put that in brackets. Nine point eight uh, times uh, the time, which we don't know. Okay, I'll keep that out of the brackets just so it's a little bit easier. Um, so we're trying to get the time on the side by itself. We could have rearranged that equation 
um, to start with, um, which is probably a little bit better habit to get into. I'll, I'll try and remember for future videos, but this for what means we're going to happen is negative 14.1 equals negative 9.8t. So if we divide both sides now by negative 9.8, means this cancels to give us t on the right hand side and that equals negative 14.1 over negative 9.8 so let's perform that calculation and that gives us 1.44 seconds so remember that's only the time to the top to the apex we need to double that to get the time to go up and down. So uh, times in that by two. Total flight time equals two times 1.44, which is 2.88 seconds. I'm going to leave that unrounded for now because that's the um, that is only rounded to two, uh, three significant figures rather than the two because we also want to use that value to find um, our um, our overall uh, range and let's just go back grab another color and this is our range formula here d equals v times t um, we now know the time is 2.88 seconds to three significant figures. We'll round our final answer to two um, as our original values down there are to two. Um, but for now we need to find what that velocity is, that horizontal velocity. So horizontal part of um, the initial velocity and that doesn't change. Remember the vertical one changes because there's the force due to gravity acting on it which is decelerating or accelerating down towards the ground that bleeds off the speed as it's going up until it starts increasing in speed in the downward direction until it hits the ground um, because of that uneven force but horizontally there are no forces acting um, in this ideal situation in the real world you have air resistance but we're not worried about that um, most of physics at this level um, especially when you're beginning you, you ignore air resistance and extra tricky bits uh, so Horizontally, we need the horizontal velocity. Um, that will be equal to 24 times the cosine this time, because this is the adjacent angle to the um, adjacent to the 36 degree angle, cos of 36 degrees. And when we plug that into our calculator, 24 cosine of 36 gives us 19.4 meters per second. So that's our initial velocity, v, and now we just need to multiply that by t to get d. So d equals 19.4 times by the time of 2.88 seconds to get our total horizontal range. Uh, times by 2.88 equals 55.9 meters. How do I know it's in meters? Because we've used SI units all the way through. Um, now if I'm going to round that to the same number of significant figures as given in the original data, that would round to two significant figures, the same as everything in the original data, um, and we've been multiplying and dividing, so we should stick with significant figures. Um, so that gives us 56 metres. So that's the horizontal range from here to here, where it's the ground after it comes across at 56 metres. And that's fantastic. One final note, um, because we've dealt with this example without air resistance, um, if we had no air resistance, um, we would get that particular range, but if we had air resistance, what do you think the range would be? Well, we can't actually do a, a nice calculation, because we don't have the maths for that, but it's definitely going to be less than 56 metres because uh, the horizontal velocity will decrease according to the force due to friction that is applied in the opposite direction to the motion. And what the curve or the flight path would look like, instead of being a nice even parabola, we're going to get um, for air resistance um, a nice squashed 
kind of parabola so that the apex is still roughly in the same place but um, the second half of the flight is much shorter so that D1 is significantly smaller than D2 because as the air resistance takes off speed it slows it right down so there we go that's a good example for horizontal projectile motion um, next time we'll look at how to find the height um, of it and that's again using kinematic equations but I think you could go and do this yourself using the original data if you really wanted to see how it goes that'll be the next video finding the height